So why are we focused on the things that don't matter? That goes to show you they don't want to see change. They don't want us to get better. Because if you want to get better, you would talk about those problems. Now, how can we stop them from killing each other? Well, create jobs, create opportunity, get money and funding to create. Because if we wasn't spending all this money on illegal immigration, because we spend over $600 million a year in, having, in aborting illegal immigrants' babies. So imagine we didn't do that. Imagine we have illegal immigrants. That 600 million can go to our communities. Look at all the things that got cut from schools, no art programs, no music, no sports. We used to have PAL, we used to have all these things that actually gave kids an opportunity to be out of the streets. Welcome to Crossroads. I'm your host, Joshua Phillip. Today we have with us King Face. Real pleasure having hey, how you are on. You, Josh, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so we're going to talk about communities. We're going to talk about his own work, talking to people wearing a MAGA hat in New York City and what that's like, and about standing your ground, his own story, where he's come from, and how he, how he made it to where he is now. Yeah, so t tell, us your, tell us your story. I know you have kind of, you, how you got to where you are now. I know you have kind of an unconventional story, people might think, from the conservative standpoint. Um, well, you know, my family, majority of them were Democrats, you know, they're big Democrats, you know, because, you know, the, the perception that they've always had was Democrats is for black people. So I never really cared about politics because the lifestyle I was living really didn't matter to me who was president or what's going on because I wasn't living the greatest of lives in the sense of being a, a productive citizen in the country or whatever. You know, I did a lot of things that, you know, I'm not proud of, but because of that, I didn't really care about politics until, uh, you know, Obama was running for president. And, you know, for me, I've always believed that we could do whatever we want in life. I don't believe that there's anything holding us back, you know? So anytime I would have that discussion with the people in my community, they would say, well, we can never be president or whatever. So I'd be like, all right, damn. So they kind of got it there. So when Obama decided to run for presidency, I was like, this is my opportunity to now me be right. So when he became president, you know, and I was like, okay, good now. now my people can't sit there and say what they can't do. Because I really don't like people saying what they can't do. I just think that word can't automatically shut your brain down. So I, I tell people, don't say the word can't. Even if it is, seems impossible. Still don't say the word can't. Because you got the right brothers, you know, who was to believe that we could fly like birds? You know, so if they thought the process of can't, you wouldn't be able to fly across the country. So that's why I never liked that word. So when he became president, it was a way for me to combat the people that would say they can't do things. It wasn't because I cared about politics. It was just about being right, for me at first. So as I um, you know, started looking more into the politics and I started like being more interested in it. So I started looking into Democrats and then I started looking into Republicans. And as I started digging deep in, in, into uh, you know, the history, I'm like, wait a minute, Democrats, they started a KKK? Whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. Democrats called their super predators? Wait, Democrats created Planned Parenthood, which killed millions and millions of black babies? Wait, so why are we supporting this? Then when I looked into the history of Republicans, Abraham Lincoln, who's a Republican, even in Congress, the first Republicans were black. So it's like, why are we? And then I'm like, wait a minute. Then when I started looking at the values of Republicans, I'm like, I'm about less government. You know, without the tattoo that showed, you know what I'm saying? I'm about God and I'm about family. These are the values that every African American truly has. So it was like, I, I never understood that. So for me, that's really what, what it was, is to wake people's minds up on it. Like, you're on the wrong side. Like, they don't care about us. And throughout history, it shows it. You know, anytime that we had mass incarceration, it was a Democrat. Anytime we had anything that was negative towards the black community, it was a Democrat. It was never a Republican. So that's what gave me that push to go and speak to people and be like, listen, open your minds. If, even if you look at our community, all the communities that's messed up are all ran by Democrats. Then when you look at the places that are run by Republicans, it's nice, it's clean, people are living, they got jobs. But then when you look at, look, look, look what a Democrat did, AOC, took away 20,000 jobs in New York City. That's 20,000 people that could have been out of the streets, 20,000 people that would have been able to support their family. Why would you take the, that opportunity away? You have to think about that. If these people really care about you, they want to, when I tell people, if somebody cares about you, they want to give, put you in a position not to need them. They're not going to want you to be dependent, you know? So that's what, I, that's what I really be trying to wake up my people about. And I know you, you come from kind of a rough background. You were in a gang. You yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, uh, stuff. yeah, I was a, a blood gang member. I mean, I still consider myself a blood because, you know, I'm always going to be connected to that because, like I said, the original message of the bloods was brotherly love, override oppression, and destruction. So, and that's what I'm about. I'm about brotherly love, whether white, black, you know, and I'm definitely 
about I'm against the, uh, oppression. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't want to see my people oppressed, but somehow when drugs got involved into into that lifestyle, it became a violent one, so it took it away from the original message. You know, so I'm I want to bring it back to that essence. You know, instead of us looking at it as a negative, let's let's bring back what the purpose was, which was community affairs, protecting our community, making sure people were safe, making sure we we were able to uh, you know, prosper and benefit ourselves instead of just looking at it like, okay, I want to kill him or I want to fight him because he's a you know, he has a blue bandana or a black bandana or whatever. So I just want to bring back the essence, you know, like, so that's why I don't want to, you know, completely separate myself from it and say, oh, I'm not a part of the gang. The reason why I say I'm a former gang member is because I'm not active. I'm not on the streets trying to harm anybody or doing anything illegal. I just want to change the perception, you know, because that's, that's the thing about America. We could turn something negative and make it positive, you know? So like even the, the N word, it may be negative in one aspect, but it's positive in another. So that's just what we do. So I want to actually change that, you know, that 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 perception of gangs. You know, so I want to start like community affairs where, you know, us as gang members, we go in the community, clean it up. If there's broken fences, let's fix it. You know, if there's if there's an old lady that's crossing the street, hold her hand. You know, like things like that. Like I want to bring that essence back. Now I, I know one of the things you do is you go around your community and you talk to people. You kind of get in their faces a little bit. Probably. I don't get in their faces. They actually get in my face. Oh, they get in your face. Because when they see my hat, it's like for them, it's like you know you're black. Why are you wearing a MAGA hat? Like you know Donald Trump is racist, and then that's what causes the conversation. Because my thing is, what I try to find out is, are you saying he's racist because you actually have evidence, or because somebody told you he was racist? Because to me, that's a chatty patty. That's just somebody gossiping. You're not really telling anything you actually know. You just heard something and you feel the need to keep repeating it. You know, and that, that to me is what I've tried to find out. So then that's how I get them. It's like, okay, prove to me he's racist. And they never can. It's like, they'll bring up stuff that has nothing to do with race. You know what I mean? It, it's like, you're talking about um, the border. Well, Obama wanted the border. Hillary wanted the border. Bill Clinton wanted the border. Everybody wanted the border. Now, all of a sudden, now they don't want a border. Then I have to tell them common sense. Why would they do that? They don't get no more votes. Everybody's not voting Democrat anymore. So of course you're gonna bring in illegals. Why you see them speaking Spanish and all that during the the, the 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 Democratic debate? And it's like you didn't even mention nothing about American people. This is why I love Donald Trump because he talks about it. And to me, that's the most important thing. We need to focus more on our country. That's why when he was like, I don't care what they're doing over there and their countries, let them do what they want. Yeah, I agree with that. Because why are we why are we fighting other people's wars? It doesn't make sense. We should be about America first. And these Democrats don't care about Americans. They care about people that are committing crimes. They want to defend criminals. Because at the end of the day, you're trespassing. If I trespass in this building without no permission, I'm going to get locked up. That's a crime. Whether you like that or not, that's just the reality. You know, my mother got deported. So am I mad at the government for that? Didn't that happen during Obama? Am I mad at Obama? No. My mother should have handled her business. She came here the right way. And then that would have never happened. That's reality, regardless of how emotional attachment people want to bring up on that. The reality is, if she wasn't committing crimes, if she applied and did everything the right way, she didn't come in here illegally, she wouldn't have got deported. Period. Well, and this is kind of a theme, too. You're, you're talking about, I mean, you seem like you really care about your community. And with Trump, too, the whole idea of you know, caring about your own, that's a, that's a very similar principle, you know, according to what you're saying. Yeah. And even talking about these, uh, you know, Unfortunately, mostly Democrat politicians run the big cities. They don't seem to care about their communities. Because all they care about saying. is votes. You know, they don't, they, don't, they don't care about anything, you know. If they did, they would be doing more for our communities. It would, it, it, Cause the money is there. The money is there. Same thing with Cummings. Uh, Trump gave a lot of money to Baltimore. Where'd that money go? Where did it go? If, and th th it's, not, it's not that ex expensive to fix a community. That's the perception that we put in people's minds. 75 cents a day could change our community. 75 cents. If 35 cents could change a whole country in Africa, what are you trying to tell me in a place we got the most prosperous, most machinery, most intelligent people in the world, and you're trying to tell me that we can continue with this? No, because they don't want to teach us how to take care of ourselves. They want us to be dependent. Because the more they keep you dependent, then they can control you. And then they can get you to do whatever they want. 75 cents a day. It's that simple. We have 200,000 households. 75 cents a day, every three months, that's $50. Together, that's $10 million every three months. It's $40 million a year. You trying to tell me we can't use that money to build infrastructure, to build comp start companies, to open up schools, 24-hour daycares, uh, make sure we have all, um, sufficient means of how to uh, benefit ourselves as a community? Are you telling me that's impossible? But we have no problem standing on line for our iPhone. We have no problem standing on line for sneakers it is, or, or a chicken sandwich. 
Like it, it, it doesn't make sense to me. That it goes to show you, us as a community, we're already messed up. That we don't see priorities, and that's the biggest problem we have in our communities. That we don't have priorities. We you know we, we the things that don't matter is what we pay attention to. Well, you you, know, you hit on a really interesting point. This idea that if you don't care about people, you want them to be dependent. If you care about them, you want them to be independent. You want mm -hmm. them to be able to take care of their own. Can you imagine what would happen if your parents seen you? doing nothing with your life, the worst thing in the world is for them to die like that. Just think about that for a second. P parents don't want to die when they see their kids not where they need to be in life because they want them to be able to take care of themselves when they're gone. So imagine you're a loser. Can you imagine what that loser's parents is feeling like every day? Can you imagine that? Like a loser, they, they, their family is dying in misery because they're like, damn, I gotta die. I know this kid is not even gonna be able to take care of himself. That's a horrible way to even live life. You know, so like I said, with the community, most importantly, is because I did a lot of wrong in the community. I was a part of it. So I don't want to be a part of that destruction anymore. You know, I want to actually change it and be a part of the rebuild, the rebuilding of our community. That's what I want to be. I don't want to be a part of destruction anymore. And what, what, what made you change in that regard? What, what made you, I mean, obviously you need, you need to care to a certain extent if you're even going to bother trying to turn people's thinking around. If you're even going to bother arguing, you know, dealing with them, arguing with you, dealing with all that, you have to care to some extent. What, what of course, because when people, when people don't care, they don't say anything. You know, it's like a parent that allows a kid to do whatever they want. That parent doesn't really care about that kid. You know, people might look at it like, oh, you know, they care because they're letting them be free. But that freedom sometimes destroys that kid's life. You know what I'm saying? If you really care about your kid, you're going to discipline them. You know, if you really care about somebody, you're going to tell them the truth. You know, I want to tell them the truth because I want their lives to be better. Because in a way, it helps me as well. Because if I could change you and be a positive person, it makes the streets safer for people like me. So why wouldn't I? And I want the streets safe for the people that I care about as well. Not just the people that I'm talking to, but for my family as well. My family grows up in these communities. My friend grow up in these communities. I don't want them to feel like they can't come outside and worry about getting shot or worry about any kind of, or, or living in poverty and filth. I don't want nobody to live like that because I don't want to live like that. So whatever I don't want for me, I definitely don't want for you. You know, so, and, and, you know, and that, to me, that's the path of Jesus at the end of the day. You know, and I know, you know, you know, I, I recently, you know, accepted Jesus into my life. So, but I didn't understand that I was walking his path even before I accepted him. So once I accepted him, I seen I'm walking his path. And that's what he was doing. He was talking to the people that didn't have anything. The bums, the criminals, the thieves. If you look at the 12 apostles, guess what? They were all bad people. They weren't good people. You know, I mean, in the aspect of how you would look at people, they were not good people. You know, and why did he do that? Because he understood that those are the people that literally truly affect our world. Because who comes to rob you? Not the guy from the suburbs. It's going to be the guy from the hood that ain't got nothing. So who you think is more important for me to talk to? Them or the guy in the suburb? Because I want to protect the people that's in the suburbs as well. Like, I don't want these guys to come after you because they're hungry and they're starving and they ain't have nothing. So let me help change their mindset so they can be better people. So they don't have to come for what you got because they're getting their own. And that's what, I, that's what I want, that's what I want to see. Because to me, that's the true meaning of, essence of peace, is everybody being able to be able to pay their bills, you know, the peace of mind of not stressing about where I'm gonna eat my next meal. Because these type of things create crime. Because if you're hungry, you're gonna do whatever, you, especially if you have kids, you're gonna do whatever you gotta do to feed them. So if you gotta rob somebody and kill them, you're gonna do it. So why not we figure out a way to get them to not have to do that? And that's what I'm focused. If they, they, if they could spend over $300,000 on giving you food stamps and Section 8 and all that stuff, why wouldn't the government choose to take that money and invest in you and actually cre help create you becoming a, a successful person in, in society? I'd rather invest that 300000 in putting you in school, helping you start a business, build your credit, help you buy a home, because now you have private ownership, so you're not going to want to see your community destroyed because then your property value goes down because you own a home. Most of these people don't care about the community they live in because they don't own nothing in there. They have nothing. So why would they care about having pissy elevators? Why would they care about dirt on the street? Why would they care about that? It's not theirs. So if, you, if we start bringing, bringing that pride of ownership and being a business owner, then guess what? They're going to care more about the community because they have something to lose. When you have nothing to lose, you don't care. And there's also another thing too, the idea that, <clears throat> the idea that people can change and that you can be forgiven for your past. That's funny enough, it's kind of a more of a conservative idea. I think these days we have this, a lot of the race narratives are based on, you know, your ancestors were slave owners, or maybe not directly even, just because of the color of your skin. And so you should be condemned forever because of what they did. You're a man, so you should be condemned with all the worst things men ever did. It's this idea that not only can people never be forgiven, 
but you should also never be forgiven even for things you had nothing to do with. Whereas the conservative side, you mentioned like Jesus and the, you know, his apostles, that a person can change and that their past can be forgiven. That's a very interesting uh, I mean, viewpoint, look at me. right? I was a game member. You know, I was doing bad things, you know what I mean? And I decided to change my life because I wanted better. And I seen that the path I was going wasn't the best way. And deep down inside, every human being actually is good. You know, they, it's there. It's just that somebody has to recognize it. Well, if you can't recognize it yourself, then somebody else has to see it. Luckily for me, I recognize the goodness in myself because, I, because you could tell. When you look at somebody that's suffering, you could feel it. You know, like you see somebody not being able to feed themselves, you could feel it. So it's not something that you, you know, like you just have to see. It's like you can literally feel it. Like, so I felt it every time I seen somebody in my community get killed for some BS. I felt it. Like, it hurt. You know what I'm saying? Even if I didn't know that person, it was just like, geez, that could have been one of my friends. Easily. So when you see these things, like, you're like, well, what can I do different? First, you got to change yourself. That's the key. You can't think about changing anything else until you change yourself. Because if you don't change your mindset, then your circumstances are not going to change. You know, I changed my mindset. My circumstances started to change. My life started to get better. I started being more happy. You know what I mean? Because I decided to make a decision that I want to do the right thing. And look, I ended up at the White House. You know what I'm saying? With tattoos on my face. You know, tattoo on my neck, my hands everywhere. I'm, I'm there. And I'm not even good with speaking proper English. I got an eighth grade vocabulary, really. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, how did I get there? You know, because I changed my life. So I didn't look at what the deficiencies I had. I looked at the positives that I had. And that's what I try to tell people when you wake up in the morning. Think about five things that is positive about your life and your day will be better. Because most people focus on that one negative thing and then forget about all the other positive things. Like, first of all, you woke up. That's the number one positive thing. Then you can look at your, your health. Then you can look at your family. Then you can look at your job. Then you can look at you have a roof over your head. Like, you got to start thinking, people need to start thinking more like that. I think we think so negative about everything. We focus on the negatives. That's really not that big of a deal. Because if we really look at the things that's really positive in our lives, it would make the bad things mean nothing. But we just have this mentality that we want to focus on the negative. It's horrible. When it comes to Trump, he seems to have kind of given you a lot of hope from what I get. And you know, you going around talking to people about his policies, what he represents for you. I mean, what, what, what is it, what does he represent for you? A real American, you know, like no BS, straight to the, you know, alpha. I think we needed an alpha male in, in, in office for the first time. You know, I haven't seen a president like that ever. You know, and like I said, you got to look at when Obama became president. I know that when everybody thought that anybody could be president, wrong. When Donald Trump became president, it proved that anybody could be president. Because nobody was talking about I'm going to run for office when Obama ran. You didn't hear Oprah talking about it or Kanye or anybody for that matter. It's when Donald Trump ran for president and won. They're like, wait a minute. So this guy with three baby mothers, you know, this, that, a third, talks junk, cocky. You know what I'm saying? Like, and he became president? It's like, no, I could do it too. So he gave real hope to people like me. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> because usually, you know, everybody has an image. You know, if you have different baby mothers, if you was a, you know, he cheated, he did all type of things that he was a playboy. Usually those aren't the guys that become president. So when you see a normal person become president, that's a real person, not just playing a role for you. It's like, it, it brought back that honesty, like it brought back that respect, because that's what we needed in this country, some honesty. Forget the PC BS, like we need honesty, we need, we need the truth, because that's the only way you could change. That's, the, that's why when he said Baltimore is rat infested, well, you're not going to clean it if you don't know it's dirty. So somebody had to tell you this is dirty, because if you don't think it's dirty, you're going to keep living in the filth. And they done lived in it so long, they don't even think it's dirty no more, it's normal. You know what I'm saying? Like, so the truth is very necessary. Well, and that, that's actually something you talk about, you know, being like an alpha male. An alpha male is one who's not afraid to point out when something's not right. Because, what, you know, you, if a good father tells you, you know, you need to go clean your room, <laughs> Jordan Peterson always says, mm -hmm. you know, clean your, clean your room. You know, you need, you need to get your life in order. And you need sometimes to have someone tell you that. Yeah, that discipline. That, that your, your, your life is not in order. You need to get it in order. Yeah, and that's, and that's important. And I think we only get that from alpha males. You know, and, and, and Donald Trump is the prime example of that. Like, you know, because he's willing to make the decisions that he knows might, may not be as popular, but he knows is the best for us. And that's, that's the alpha male trait. You know, a beta male is going to be like, okay, fine. I know you feel this way and it's okay. You know, all right, fine. You want to feel like you're a girl today? That's cool. You want to feel like that? Oh, that's fine. 
You know, and that causes confusion. See, alphas is no confusion. Straight to the point. This is what it is. This is how we're going to handle it. And alphas get the job done. Betas don't get the job done. And that's why Donald Trump is doing so much for our community. Because he's an alpha. He's getting the job done. He's not worried about what you think about him. He's not worried about none of that. He's focused on the goal. And that's what I like about him. He doesn't care if he has to work with somebody he doesn't like. You know what I mean? If he's going to accomplish the goal, that's what matters. And that's I'm the same way. I don't care if you're a Democrat or a liberal. If you have the same goal of changing something, I'll work with you. I don't care. I can, I'll work with my enemy if it's going to help my community. It is what it is. That's alpha traits. That's why we're where we at. Stock market, another record high again. Because we have an alpha male in office, not a crybaby. And I know go, going around your community, I know you run into a lot of different questions on why do you support Trump. I know one of the big issues is, you know, Black Lives Matter and these things. What do you, what do you tell people who are into that? Black Lives Matter? What, when did Black Lives Matter matter to Black, did Black Lives Matter? Show me. When, when a young girl gets shot in the head from a straight bullet, I don't see them marching. I don't see none of that. Where is it at? You know why they don't do that? Because they can't get money from those black people in the community. They can't sue them. But let me go after the New York City Police Department because I can get some money off of them. That's why they only talk about it. So, but who's Black Lives Matter? Like, show me. All lives matter. Anybody that's against that, then you're not a human being. Because who, whose life is better than yours? Why? Your life is better than mine because you're white? My life is better than yours because I'm black? How? How? If we all get in a fire right now, who's going to know who's who? If we all burnt in the fire, they're going to be able to tell that that's a white male right there? Are they going to tell us a black male right there? You can't tell. So why are we talking like that? I think that's not fair. I think that's not fair to white people. I think it's not fair to anybody else when you're saying black lives matter. I, I, I don't want to hear somebody say white lives matter. I don't want to hear somebody say Hispanic lives matter. I want to hear us say all lives matter. All our lives matter. So with, with black lives matter, like I, I, I have no... Uh, Respect for them because they're really not doing nothing for black lives. If anybody really care about black lives is Donald Trump. He's invested in our community over a hundred billion dollars that he's incentivizing companies to invest in our neighborhoods, meaning that he wants us to, to prosper. You know, he, HBCUs, he actually put the HBCU's office in the White House to make it a White House priority to make sure they get all the funding that they need. He given the most funding. And black people like to talk about, oh, the jail system is um, majority black. Okay, well, guess what? He just signed the first step back, which freed over 7,000 people, 93% were black. So he's actually freeing people and giving them second chances to better their lives. So I don't understand. Like, to me, that, that's black lives matter, if you ask me. You agree or disagree? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right, so, you know, Donald Trump is the blackest president we ever had, man. <laughs> Orange is the new black. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> I mean, Obama ain't do nothing for black people unless you was gay. If he was a gay black man, then he, he, he'll help you. You know, he's like, oh, you can share bathrooms with everybody. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the only thing I've seen him do for somebody that was black. They had to be gay. What about the straight black man? What about the straight white man? What about, you know what I'm saying? What about that? You know, like, to me, these are the things that, I, I, you know, I, I, it, it, I, it gave me a disdain because the things that didn't matter, that doesn't help our community, is what he focused on. What does it matter what bathroom somebody choose to go in? That's a big deal to you? That's an issue? It's not an issue. The issue is the fact that we have fatherless kids in our community. 80% of the kids that's in jail come from fatherless homes. So imagine these kids had fathers in their lives. There wouldn't be so much people in jail. These are issues. You want to talk to me about police brutality? Getting shot by police like getting struck by lightning three times in a row. It's damn near impossible. If you look at the odds, seven unarmed black people were shot in this country this year. There's 50 million blacks in this country. That's not even 0000000000.1% 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, of black people. So how is that a threat? That's why I look at people stupid. It's like, wait a minute. So you want to talk about police brutality, something that happens rarely in our community compared to something that happens 80% in our community? 80% of people that's killed in, black, in our communities is from other black people. So you're trying to tell me the leaky faucet in your bathroom is way more important than the fire in your kitchen? That doesn't make sense to me because that, that's more dangerous to me. Wouldn't you, what you going to go deal with first? The leaky faucet in your, in your bathroom or the fire in your kitchen? Which one are you going to go deal with? Yeah, probably the fire, yeah. <laughs> probably. <laughs> that should be your first option. So why are we focused on the things that don't matter? That goes to show you they don't want to see change. They don't want us to get better. Because if you want to get better, you would talk about those problems. Like how can we stop them from killing each other? Well, create jobs. Create opportunity. Get money and funding to create. Because if we wasn't spending all this money on illegal immigration, because we spend over $600 million a year in, having, in, in aborting illegal immigrants' babies. So imagine we didn't do that. Imagine we have illegal immigrants. That 600 million can go to our communities. Look at all the things that got cut from schools, no art programs, no music, no sports. We used to have PAL. We used to have all these things. 
that actually gave kids an opportunity to be out of the streets. So if you know we don't have these things, why are you wasting money on things that don't matter instead of focusing on what matters? Let's open up these programs, bro. That's why I mentioned the whole community putting 75 cents. Because we need these things, whether it's swimming programs, whether it's teaching people how to build a credit, because that's one of the things that we don't have in our community. Nobody teaching us to be financially stable. Nobody teaching us to build our credit. I didn't learn that. I didn't. These things are important for our community. Why did I focus on these things? Because these are the things that's going to really create change. All that other BS ain't going to do nothing for us. It makes no sense. So you're talking about solving, solving the causes of the problems, fixing things at the root, it's always hel the helping root. people fundamentally. Yeah, it's the root. We, we focus on the, the end result. No, let's focus on the problem. Because if you have a weed in your garden, you're not going to keep pulling the weed off and chopping off the top. It's going to go right back. So the only thing you can do is uproot it. So you got to get to the root of the problem. We can't keep talking about, oh, look, the weed is there. No, let's talk about why the weed is there. Because once we understand the why, then we can fix it. In any field, it's about why first, right? That's the only way you can get the answer. Well, why is this happening? Okay, well, they have, kids have nowhere to go. Why? There's no, no funding for the community centers. You know, why these kids are robbing? There's no jobs. So once you figure out the why, now you can fix the problem. Okay, now let's create more jobs. Okay, let's open up centers. You know, there's mothers out there that don't have the fathers in their lives, and they may need extra help. So we can have a 24-hour daycare. So we can make sure their kids are not in the streets. You know what I'm saying? These are the things that's important. Like, we have to understand the why. Once you get the why, then you can fix the problem. And we know the why. You, know, you seem to really, you really, I get the sense, you really genuinely care about your community. Where does that come from? I don't know. I just always cared about people. You know, I love animals too. So if I see an animal being hurt, it bothers me as well. So, you know, I don't know. I, I, I wish I understood that feeling, but I've always cared about people. That's where the King Face name comes from. Huh? Yeah, because, you know, uh, kings love the people, you know, regardless of, you know, if, even if they don't like you. Even, even the people that don't like me, I want to help them because at the end of the day, they don't know no better. You know, so I, I'll take the hate and I'll take it because I know at the end of the day, you're going to love me for it. You know, you may not like me now because I don't agree with, you know, their... And you get that. Oh, all the time. Yeah. All the time. But like I said... I'm not just, I don't just want to help Republicans. I don't want to just help blacks. I don't want to just help whites. I want to help everybody. You know what I'm saying? It's not, even my enemies, I want them to do good. I want them to prosper because if they're prosper, they ain't going to have time to want to be my enemy. So I want the best for them as well. So it's not just about doing what's beneficial for Republicans. You know, I want to do what's beneficial for us all. You know, because that's to me, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I just like people, man. I wish I didn't, but I just do. <laughs> That probably, probably makes your life a little more difficult. Because yeah, when you don't care, man, it's easier to live life, you know, because you don't care. It's like, all right, that person is there starving on the floor. Who cares? You keep it moving. But I can't see that. That just bothers me because I was there. I was homeless before. I know what it's like not to be able to eat. You know, I know what it's like not to have somewhere to sleep where you have to wake up. Is, you know, you could go to your friend's house and, you know, for like two hours just so you can shower and hurry up and leave before their parents come home. Like, I know what that's like. You know what I'm saying? So because I know what that's like, when I see that, it's just like, whoa. I don't think people understand the, 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 um, the gravity of that. Like, look at this, like this person's on the street and he's, they're, they're messed up. But because people never went through that, they don't understand, you know, the, the dynamics of that. So for me, it's like, I understand. So that's why I've always had that care for people because I've seen the people suffer my whole life. So I guess, you know, I just cared. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out why I care. I shouldn't. They don't care about me. You know what I'm saying? But to me, it's not a, Jesus didn't care about who didn't care about him. You know what I mean? He cared about the people. It didn't matter to him. You know what I mean? So it doesn't matter to me. If he could do it, I could do it. Hmm. I guess just last question. I mean, say five years from now, what, what do you hope to have accomplished? Where, where do you see yourself going? I mean, what, what, what's motivating you and what do you hope to achieve through it? What's motivating me is peace. And it's regarding five years, wherever, you know, God takes me. I'm, I'm following his path. So wherever he wants me to go, that's where I'm going to go. So I don't know where I'm going to be in five years. I don't know what's going to happen in five years. I just know I'm, I'm a vessel and I'm allowing myself to be used by God to, you know, create change. So whatever direction he sends me in, I'm going to go that direction if that's what's going to help create change. So I don't know. I might do whatever. I might do radio. I might run for politics. I might do whatever the God puts in my path. That's what I'm doing. I'm not living my path anymore. I already lived my life. I did all the things that I wanted to do. So now it's time for me to do what God wants me to do. So I don't know. You know, hopefully it's something real positive. Hopefully it's something real. Hopefully we got to create peace in our communities. Hopefully we're able to uh, start businesses and, you know, uh, get programs reopened in our communities to keep the kids out the streets. You know, hopefully kids could see a better example of better leaders, you know, in the community. Because 
most of these kids are following the people that they see. So if they see a drug dealer, he has nice cars and money and the women, you know, nine times out of 10, they're gonna fall in line with that lifestyle. So I wanna see different leaders. So I wanna be that example to show them like, I came from where you come from. So if you change your mindset, you could do the right thing too. And that, like I said, I always tell you, that's the beauty about America is that you have an opportunity to, to right your wrongs. You have second chances in America. And you know, I, that's, that's my main thing. Say, so if, if you were to tell people anything, you know, what, what message would you hope to get across to them? Let me, let me try to say it without cursing. <laughs> Don't care what anybody thinks. Always believe in yourself, no matter what, and don't ever quit, because you're only a loser when you just quit. You're never a loser when you're still trying. As long as you're trying, you're winning. It's when you stop, that's when you become a loser. You know what I'm saying? So keep going, because consistency is what builds success. You know, because if you, if, if you look at um, Michael Jordan or Steph Curry, right? You think he's the best three-point shooter just because he woke up one morning and he could shoot threes? No, he went in the gym and consistently kept shooting three-pointers until he became the best three-point shooter in the world. Same thing with Don, um, I said Donald Trump. Uh, same thing with Michael Jordan. You know, he was consistent. He was the first in the gym and the last out the gym. It's consistency. A lot of people think people just have a gift and it's just, no, be consistent. Cause even an idiot could be successful if they're consistent. And my, through my consistency, I was able to be where I'm at today. Look, I'm being interviewed by you. You know what I mean? How many people get to say that coming from where I come from, you know? So, and that's the consistency. So as long as you're consistent, you could be successful. Just be consistent, believe in yourself. No matter what anybody tells you, they're gonna say, you know, people are always gonna tear you down because you're doing something that they're not brave enough to do. So expect that, you know what I mean? And, and acknowledge that, be cool with that. Just use that as motivation. Don't make it as a way to hate or be angry at those people. Use that as motivation. When people talk junk to me, I just use that as motivation. And guess what? I'm getting interviewed by you, and now they gotta see this on Instagram and they're gonna be mad some more. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thrill I get for it. But overall, don't care what people say, be consistent and believe in yourself. And I guarantee your life would be the best it would ever be. Great, well, real pleasure having you on the No, show. it's an honor, man. Thank you, Josh, man, I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Most definitely. Everyone, please remember to like and subscribe. See you next time. <laughs>